Hello, everybody. This is creating the ultimate morning routine. My name is Joris Rovers. I'm at Joris Rovers on Twitter and Joris on Discord. And everything I'll be talking about here, you can also find on my GitHub profile. That's Joris Rovers slash Casa. Does this picture look familiar to you? If had a rough night, I can tell you that's not my happy face. And that morning caffeine grip, well, this happened to me quite a lot. And honestly, it still does. But one day I woke up and I thought, can I at least automate the boring part? And so of course, this is where Home Assistant comes to the rescue. So what I'd like to do is actually walk you through my morning route throughout the house as I get up out of bed, wash up in the bathroom, transition via the hallway in the living room into my kitchen where I grab some breakfast and coffee, and then ultimately end up in my home office where I start working. So what I wanna do is walk you through the route through each of these six rooms and talk about the op automation opportunities that exist in each of them. So let's get going and start with the bedroom. So as I wake up in the morning, I don't use a regular alarm clock, but I use an application or an app called Sleep Cycle, which is one of those uh, smart alarm clocks that wakes you up not at a specific time, but within a time bracket that you set. It sort of listens uh, to whether you're snoring or when you're waking up, right? And then it wakes you up at the right time. But one of the things it also does is uh, when it starts playing music, it can also integrate with Philips U if you have the, the premium subscription to Sleep Cycle. And that can actually act as a wake up light. So this is in the special color. The picture right there is my nightstand lamp and it's just a, a simple uh, U light bulb that's plugged in there. Now, the reason this is important is because that's actually the trigger for Home Assistant to figure out, hey, yours has waked up. Right? So when that nightstand lamp um, turns on and the house is still in sleeping mode, I'll get back to the house mode in a second, and it's a working day between 7.30 and 10, then the morning routine can actually get started. So what I usually do is I browse my smartphone a little bit, a little bit, and at some point I actually get out of bed and walk into the bathroom. At that point, Home Assistant already knows that I'm up. right? So what it actually has already done at that point is turned on the lights in the bathroom. And I use the IKEA thread free light bulbs for that. And the, when, when it does that in the morning, when those lights turn on, the, the color temperature is actually set to a bright white, as that helps me wake up in the morning. What also happens is that the bathroom music is playing at that point. Uh, I have a Sonos Play, one device in my bathroom, and I use an early morning playlist from Spotify. And the nice thing about using Spotify is that that playlist actually changes over time automatically, right? I don't have to manage it. Yeah, that is a curated playlist. And then the last thing that happens is that the mirror in my bathroom is turned on. And I'd like to talk about that a little bit more. So this is me in my bathroom looking at the mirror. And one thing you notice is that part of the mirror is actually fogged up and another part is not, as I've uh, just taken a shower. And so the way that works is that I've actually stuck a mirror heating pad to back of the mirror. And so this is a self-adhesing pad. It's flexible and has wires through it that if you supply electricity, it actually warms up and it prevents the mirror from fogging up. And so what I did is I hooked up the light in the mirror together with the mirror heating pad, plugged that into a smart plug and had that talk to Home Assistant. So now when the bathroom lights turn on, I can actually have the mirror with both the heating pad as well as the light turn, turn on as well. Awesome. At that point, I've, I basically do my business in the bathroom and I exit the bathroom and I turn off the bathroom lights using just a, a wall um, um, controller, right? Nothing special there. Um, but as I turn off the bathroom light, right, something else happens. It's um, when the conditions are that the house is still in sleeping mode, it's past 7 a.m. I don't want this to happen in the middle of the night if for some reason I happen to turn on the bathroom uh, lights or turn them back off afterwards. But when those conditions are met, what actually happens is that house mode goes from sleeping to daytime. And I use a home assistant's input select to do that. And when the house mode transitions from sleeping to daytime, there's actually a bunch of automations that get triggered in the hallway, in the living room, and in the kitchen. So let's talk about each of those. First, as I enter the hallway, uh, what happens is that the cameras that I have around my house for security reasons, they turn off, right? Not just in the hallway, but really everywhere where they're filming inside, because as many other people, I don't like to be filmed during my daytime, right? The ones outside, they just stay on. 
The other thing that happens is that the curtain in my uh, hallway that I used to keep some of the coal out um, actually opens up. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in the next slide. And then um, independently from that is that the lights turn on and off in the hallway and in a couple of other locations, like the toilet that is also part of the bare hallway, right? Um, but that's independent. That doesn't you really use uh, triggers in Home Assistant. It's just using motion activated sensors, right? And again, those are touch free uh, light bulbs and the light temperature also varies based on the time of day. Now, I've talked a little bit about, uh, or I mentioned the automatic curtain, right? And here you can see an animated GIF going back and forth. This is what it actually looks like. Um, but this is something I created myself. If we sort of stop the animation, have a look at under the cover, there's really two parts that you can see. There's a special curtain rod and there's a motor attached, right? And so the brand that I got, it's called Duya. There's other brands out there as well. Um, but Duya is available at your favorite online Japanese warehouse. And um, basically this particular model, um, it has its own smartphone app, I believe, but I don't really use it. I use it as a dumb curtain rod and motor and I hooked it up to a smart relay, right? Um, and then the Shelly 2.5. What I did there is then I flashed ESP Home, which is a custom firmware that is very popular in the Home Assistant community, onto that smart relay, which makes it trivially easy to then integrate it over Wi-Fi with uh, Home Assistant itself. Now, of course, I already, in the top right corner, you can see this is definitely a bit more of an advanced use case, uh, but it works really well, and I'm, I'm super happy with it. Awesome. At this point, I have basically exited the hallway and I'm making it into my living room. And in my living room, it's sort of what you expect, right? The first thing that uh, happens is that the lights have turned on and there's a different playlist now uh, playing in the living room and in the rest of the house. But the second thing that also happens is that my TV morning dashboard is showing. Now, this is also um, more of a custom integration. This is not something that Google, or sorry, um, Home Assistant does out of the box. But what I've basically done is I've taken a Raspberry Pi, a small computer, hooked it up to my computer using an HDMI cable. And then um, as, I, as the house mode triggers from sleeping to daytime, Home Assistant sends a command, a rest, so-called rest command, to a script running on the Raspberry Pi that knows how to turn on the TV, open the browser, and navigate to my dashboard that I'll show in the next slide. Um, Home Assistant does allow you to do something uh, like this more out of the box using Homecast, which is beta based out of off of Google Cast, which most people know because of the Chromecast devices. Um, but this isn't something I've, I've personally um, experimented with or I'm using today. But basically, um, it looks uh, something like this, right? It has all sorts of general information on it. And so I usually sort of stop for a few seconds and look at what is the weather uh, for the day. Is there any rain coming soon, right? Is there any trash pickup? Um, are there any birthdays, any other important family events that are, are, not, um, are on the Google Calendar? And then maybe have a look at, uh, at some of the cameras around the house to see if everything is still okay. Cool. At that point, I basically exit uh, the living room and I make it into the kitchen. The first thing that has happened is, at this point, the usual suspect, right? The, light ha the lights have turned on, the music is playing. But then the other thing that happened is also that my smart kettle has start started boiling some water for some tea. Actually, that's not true. Um, I wanted to do this for a long time, but then I didn't. Um, I thought about this problem and after thinking about it for a long time, I took a very different approach. Uh, what I did is I invested a little bit more money and I bought a boiling water tap. Uh, this particular brand, the particular brand that I have is rather popular here in the Netherlands uh, and in, in other parts of Europe. But um, what it basically is, it has a seven liter uh, boiling water, um, well, a seven liter boiler that gives you, always gives you boiling water, right, on demand. And so I basically bypassed the whole problem of trying to cook water on demand or using a home assistant trigger uh, by just having it always available. And sort of the point um, that I wanna make with this, right, is as I've gone through my journey of home automation, I've learned that sometimes it's not just about uh, using smart devices. In many cases, it's also about thinking about the problem itself. Automation and home automation does not necessarily mean 
using a smart device, right, to do the same. Cool. And then sort of I, at that point, I take my coffee or tea, my breakfast, I make it into my home office where I, I have my breakfast and, and tea and coffee. Um, so at that point, I use a wired cable, a wired Ethernet cable to plug in my laptop. And I use a very simple home assistant sensor, the ping sensor as a de or device tracker router uh, to sort of detect that I've plugged in my laptop. And if that happens during a work day, um, basically everything else gets turned off. The lights, the music, the TV, um, and the office lights um, turn on, the curtains in the office are opened. Um, I wanted to specifically call out the Workday binary sensor in Home Assistant, which I think is great. It's a sensor that actually lets you know whether any given day is a working day in your particular geography. Um, so it takes into account things like uh, calendar, whether your weekday, your week starts on a Sunday or a Monday, as well as local holidays. Um, and then the other thing I've started looking at more recently is the Home Assistant Mac application, which is currently still in beta, but I'm hoping to use some of that in the future to build in a little bit more intelligence between my laptop, my Mac, and um, Home Assistant itself, uh, because it does provide a, a bunch of great sensors to Home Assistant. So at that point, my morning ride throughout the house is really ended, right? It's done, it's complete, we're here. Um, so what I wanted to do right before um, I wrap up here is really talk a little bit about creating your own morning routine. Um, the bad news is the state of home automation is still uh, such that it's not plug and play, right? Some tinkering is required to do something like this. Um, but the good news is that Home Assistant has made it so much easier. I cannot emphasize that enough. Even uh, during the keynote that we were just listening about, it's incredible how far Home Assistant itself has come, um, even over the past year. I've been doing this for almost four years, or almost five, I should say. And um, the, the speed of innovation in both the home automation landscape and Home Assistant in particular is truly amazing. Um, the, the second bullet point here under the good news is there is a lot of different ways to get to the similar outcome, right? Um, there's probably a bunch of people listening and watching this that have said, oh, but I do the same thing, but differently, or you shouldn't be doing it that way. That's a poor way of doing it, right? Do it this way. Um, I think the great thing about home, home Assistant is that it gives you so much flexibility and options, right? So you can do what works for your interest, your budget, your particular home, your routine, uh, and your family as well. Um, and I think that's pretty awesome. And ultimately, it is a lot of fun. So I can I can really recommend it to everybody. Really, uh, that was it for me. Um, again, I'm at Yodis Rovers on Twitter and yours on Discord. You can find all the details at Yodis Rovers slash Casa. And there's a bunch more of my home automation stuff on that repository as well, like Walmart and tablets, a window opener I built. Uh, I have a bunch of other stuff in my stack like monitoring with Prometheus and Grafana and, and a bunch more things as well. So thank you again um, for uh, giving me this opportunity. And I'll be uh, hanging out in the open Q&A uh, room or session if anybody wants to ask questions. Thank you.